Ducan Deckmaster is a waterproof vinyl sun deck system that is user friendly, low maintenance, and allows storage or recreational living area beneath the deck. This DVD provides complete instructions and handy tips for making your vinyl deck project as simple and as easy as possible. Before starting your Deckmaster vinyl project, be sure to calculate the amount of vinyl and items you will need to do your deck. Our informative brochure has a handy chart to quickly calculate your deck requirements. If you're acquiring a permit, be sure to check the building codes for your project. The Deckmaster system can be applied over a variety of deck surfaces, including new plywood, fiberglass, hypalon rubber, and above-ground concrete decks. Even a slotted lumber deck can be refitted to accommodate the Deckmaster system. We do not recommend laying vinyl over previously painted surfaces or over top of old sheet vinyl. Deckmaster may also be used for boats, boathouses, wharves, or docks. When looking for the perfect day to do your project, we recommend taking precaution with extremely warm or cold weather. The perfect temperature is between 15 and 30 degrees Celsius. Direct sun on the deck will cause the adhesive to dry too quickly. If heat is in question, always test the deck surface with the hand method. Place the palm of your hand on the deck and hold for 5 to 10 seconds. If you can keep your hand there comfortably, the deck temperature is acceptable to adhere the vinyl. If the temperature is below 15 degrees Celsius, low temp adhesive is required. You may use low temp adhesive in temperatures as low as 8 degrees Celsius if using overlap cement or 5 degrees Celsius if using the hot air welding method. Building materials required when building your new deck. Joist hangers for up against the home. Pier pads for leveling your deck. Post saddles for leveling your main beam to carry the joist. Good sanded 3 quarters to 5 eighths tongue and groove fir or spruce plywood to give you a good deck surface. If obtaining a permit, it may be necessary to bury concrete posts into the ground. Here are the materials needed when using the Deckmaster system. Measuring cup, mixing container, belt sander, hammer, tin snips, waxed paper, staple gun or tacks, chalk line, pencil, treated deck screws, galvanized ring nails, dust mask, one inch masking tape, paint brush, paint roller, roller cage with extension, paint stick, three inch putty knife, measuring tape, utility knife, and a wallpaper seam roller. You'll also need the following Deckmaster products. Deckmaster 31.5 mil or 45 mil vinyl, Deckmaster water-based regular adhesive, solvent-based low temp adhesive, Deckmaster trim adhesive, overlap cement, deck patch filler, Deckmaster caulking, U-channel, galvanized flashing, and galvanized cant strip. Be sure to use 5 8 or 3 quarter inch tongue and groove plywood in a staggered pattern. Once this is in place, the cant strip and flashing can be installed. If you want to finish off the end of the cant strip for the edge of your deck, use tin snips to cut and fold it over. Holding the open end of the cant strip towards you, cut a vertical line to the top of the V of the cant strip. Turn the cant strip, opening down, and cut a vertical line on the flat piece that will lay on the deck surface. Now cut from the end to take this piece off. It should be approximately one and a half inches. Now, from the top of the V, cut from the end along the top to slice off the previous cut. Now fold this piece over to cover the end of the cant strip. Cut off the excess pieces until flush. Install all cant strip and flashing with galvanized ring nails every six inches.
Use deck patch to fill all open knots, surface imperfections, screw indentations, and plywood seams. Be sure to read all label instructions before beginning to get the right patching consistency. If you find the plywood sheets are not quite level, you may use the deck patch as a leveling compound. Fill all areas around the cant strip and flashing to make a smooth transition from deck to outer edge. This method requires one or two coats, but could require more in some cases. One of the advantages of deck patch is its fast drying time. Once dry, carefully inspect the deck surface, sanding or scraping off the high spots and filling in any low areas to keep your plywood even. After you've sanded the deck patch, sweep your plywood deck surface clean. Be sure to remove all debris from your deck before laying the vinyl sheeting. It's helpful to have a friend or family member assist you with your vinyl deck project. To be sure the vinyl sheets stay even on the deck, measure out the width of the vinyl to the deck. Once you have measured, you can use a chalk line to mark it. Now you're ready to roll out the vinyl. Because the vinyl has a directional pattern, it is necessary to roll the vinyl runs in the same direction to keep the pattern consistent. You should always start the vinyl parallel from the furthest point from the house working your vinyl runs in as you go. First, roll the vinyl out and cut it to length. Then re-roll onto your deck surface so the polyester backing is down. Line up the vinyl to the chalk line to keep the vinyl even. Remember to always finish adhering the vinyl to the top surface of your deck before adhering the vinyl to the flashing and cant strip edges. Your calculation should give you enough material for about two inches to go down the flashing, one inch for the overlap, and one and a half to two inches to go up and behind the cant strip. Staples or thumbtacks may be used to hold the vinyl in place while you glue the vinyl. The staples or tacks should only be placed within the one inch overlap, as this will eventually be chemically welded or hot air welded and will not allow leakage. Now it's time to fold the vinyl back half its width plus six inches. Always start the fold from the perimeter of your deck. Once the vinyl has been folded back onto itself, you're ready to put the adhesive on that portion of the deck surface and onto the back of the vinyl. Deckmaster adhesives come in a variety of choices for the do-it-yourselfer and the professional. Water-based regular adhesive, solvent-based low-temp adhesive, water-based pro-adhesive, and solvent-based pro-adhesive. The water-based adhesive has been chosen for this deck project. Always take into account the temperature and weather your best bet would be an overcast day to avoid the direct sun on the deck surface. Remember to test using the hand touch method. Dip the roller into the adhesive pail and roll the adhesive onto the plywood and the back side of the vinyl. Again, it is helpful to have two people doing this simultaneously. One person to coat the plywood surface and one to coat the back of the vinyl. If you do not have a friend helping you, be sure to coat the back of the vinyl first and the plywood surface second. This is because the adhesive will dry quicker on the plywood than it will on the vinyl backing. Now, wait until the adhesive is tacky. Use the two finger test and touch the back of the vinyl. If the glue is wet, it's not acceptable. If the glue feels sticky, the vinyl is ready to be put down on the plywood surface. From the center of the vinyl, reach under and push the vinyl down onto the plywood. Use your hands to smooth and flatten the vinyl down as you go. Do not use any type of roller to do this, as it can stretch the vinyl. 
smooth out any air bubbles that form. If you find a raised crease, lift the vinyl gently and push it back down again. You have one hour of readjusting time before the adhesive dries. Prepare to glue the opposite side of the vinyl sheet. We suggest placing a protective sheet of waxed paper down on the finished perimeter of the deck to protect the vinyl from any adhesive spillage. If you've placed staples or tacks on the vinyl edge, remove them now. Fold the vinyl sheet back again, half its width, and roll adhesive on the back of the vinyl and then the plywood. Again, wait until it is tacky and push the vinyl down onto the plywood surface, smoothing with your hands as you go from the center to the edges. Before installing the second piece of vinyl, there is some prep work that must be done. On the previously laid vinyl, place a piece of one inch masking tape down the entire edge. This is the guideline for the next piece of vinyl and is where the one inch overlap will be. It is important to also place another piece of masking tape on the underside edge of your second piece of vinyl to ensure you do not get regular adhesive on this overlap seam edge. Both these pieces of masking tape must be removed prior to finishing your overlap seam. Once the pieces of masking tape have been put in place, adhere the second piece of vinyl to the deck surface using the same method as the first. This same process will happen with each subsequent piece of vinyl that is installed. For the overlap cement to work effectively, never get any regular adhesive on the underside of the overlap. Always mask it off while applying regular adhesive. After all the vinyl has been installed on the deck, you can now finish off the seams and edges. If you have not done so already, remove the two pieces of masking tape from beneath the overlapping vinyl. At this point, 
you will be using either the chemical weld method, overlap cement, or the hot air welding method. Please see Ducan's hot air welding DVD for hot air welding instructions. For the overlap cement method, place a fresh piece of one inch masking tape, one eighth to one sixteenth of an inch away from the overlapping edge. This is to catch the overlap cement as it comes out from under the overlap. As an option, you may also place a strip of masking tape down the top piece of vinyl to protect it from getting overlap cement overspill from the roller. With the nozzle on, squeeze the overlap cement under the one inch seam at the rate of one quarter inch bead per one inch of overlap. Be sure to do only three to five feet at a time. Take the seam roller and roll over the seam, ensuring the overlap cement comes out onto the masking tape. It is important to be sure that the overlap cement is showing along the edge of the finished seam. This will ensure that the overlap cement has been evenly distributed under the vinyl overlap and will prevent leakage. After application of the overlap cement, remove the masking tape and check to be sure there is no way for water to penetrate the seam. Lay your head in line with the seam edge and look for any holes or crevices. If you find a void, roll over it again with the roller or fill with more overlap cement and roll again. Once the top surface of your deck is complete, finish the non-return flashing and the cant strip. If you have used Ducan regular adhesive, water-based pro adhesive, or water-based adhesive with your project, you must use the trim adhesive to adhere the vinyl to your flashing and cant strip. By paintbrush, apply the trim adhesive to the cant strip and the back of the vinyl. Wait until it is tacky and push the vinyl down. Ensure you do not pull and stretch the vinyl as it could lift the vinyl from the deck and cause a bubble between the transition between the cant strip and the deck surface. Leave about a quarter to a half an inch of vinyl to tuck behind the space between the cant strip and the house. Once the vinyl is tucked behind the cant strip, you can use Ducaflex caulking to caulk that space. Be sure to use masking tape before caulking to create a clean finish. As an option, you can run the vinyl up your house behind the black paper beneath your siding. If you are using 60 mil vinyl, this is a requirement. Prepare all corners of your deck by cutting the vinyl in a straight line from the deck corner to the outside edge of the vinyl. Apply the trim adhesive with a paintbrush to all flashing and the back of the vinyl. Be sure to keep the adhesive off the vinyl where the deck corners will be overlapped. Wait until the adhesive is tacky and then push the vinyl tightly down over the flashing and smooth with your hand. When you're ready to finish the outside deck corners, take one of the folds of vinyl and tuck it under the top flap onto the tacky surface of the flashing. Apply overlap cement at the corner seams to adhere the vinyl to vinyl. As an alternative, the hot air welding method may be used. When all the vinyl is adhered to the flashing and the corners are finished, tuck the vinyl under the flashing or use a utility knife to trim it off at the bottom edge of the flashing. The U-channel trim piece fits over the bottom of the flashing. It's best to start with one edge of the U-channel and slip it on gradually. 
To go around deck corners, use tin snips to cut a notch so the U-channel can bend around the corner of the flashing. Another option for corners is to cut each piece of U-channel on an angle and have them meet at the corner. Now that the deck is complete, you will have many years of virtually maintenance-free enjoyment on your new outdoor living space. To care for your vinyl surface, use the Duke Cleaner and Degreaser. The Duke is environmentally friendly and safe for use on your vinyl as well as other areas around your home. It's great for barbecue grease, oil spills, deck furniture, or as a general all-purpose cleaner, indoors or out. To remove water-based adhesive from your vinyl surface, use water and a cloth. To remove solvent-based adhesive from your vinyl, immediately brush on a small amount of trim adhesive to the area, wait until tacky, and ball it off with your finger. You can use wax paper to protect your vinyl from any spills when you're applying the adhesive. Allow only light traffic for the first 14 days while the adhesive cures. Never use bleach, harsh cleaners, or solvents on your vinyl deck surface as they can damage it. For installation of railings, be sure to caulk all screw holes and caulk around the edges of the posts to ensure a watertight seal. Always check any caulked areas yearly to be sure they're still watertight. Sometimes the adhesive can take longer than an hour to dry, depending on temperature and humidity. Complete the deck as directed. In time, the adhesive will dry. Never use deck furniture without caps on the base of the legs, as this could cut into your vinyl. Use a plastic snow shovel to remove snow from the vinyl surface. Use the Duke Cleaner and Degreaser to safely clean your deck surface at least twice a year. If you find any bubbles forming under your vinyl, do not panic. Lightly push them down. The bubbles could be an indication of too much glue, and the vinyl bubbles should go down on their own. To repair a hole or tear in your vinyl surface, please contact our technical department at Ducan Products for further instruction. If you have further questions regarding the installation of the Ducan Deckmaster system or any of our other products, please contact us.